Welcome to the 938 Podcast. We appreciate you joining us today as we talk about missions around the world. I'm Steve Bender, Associate Mission Director with the Baptist Bible Fellowship, and uh, together with Brian Garrison. Welcome, Brian. Hey, Steve. Good to be here with you. Thank you. We, uh, we, we want to take this afternoon and just talk about missions and what's going on around the world, but, <clears throat> but mostly about uh, what our missions office does and how we serve our missionaries. You know, uh, when uh, I first started out as a missionary back in 1983, I just thought that the missions office uh, processed money for me and that was it. Uh, but I come find out that the missions office has, has a, a lot of things that we do for our missionaries. And one of them is that we have several sending platforms uh, the, uh, the career missionaries, those that feel that like God has called them to a field and, and they've surrendered their lives and they're going uh, to spend the rest of their life on the mission field telling yeah. the people God's called them to about missions. And, and then we have another platform, the internship missionary, that uh, maybe they're not really uh, fully committed that that's where God wants them, but they want to go for a year and work alongside mm-hmm. a career missionary. They can be uh, endorsed as a an intern missionary, go out and raise a minimum of support, go to the mission field and serve for a year. Uh, it's a it's a great opportunity. And then we have others that uh, give us give us some insight on. Yeah, those. so so two more. Uh, so we really have four four uh, distinct tracks, if you will. We call them platforms. Sure. Uh, and the career, the intern, uh, also at the entry point level uh, would be the Beyond Borders uh, program. Craig Stevenson, another uh, associate mission director, heads that program up. Uh, and, it's, and it's centered basically around resources uh, and also short-term trips. Uh, so it's, it's literally the entry point of taking, taking someone um, either at their point of call or, you know, initiating them into the, the idea of missions, period. Introduction on, on a, time. On an introduction yeah. to missions, basically. Um, and then from there, uh, it, we, we basically put them into the pipeline um, and, and filter them to one of the other platforms. And so you already mentioned the other two. Uh, and then I have the privilege of directing the World Initiative Network, uh, which is our newest platform. Uh, we, uh, we launched it in January of 2019, two years old now. Uh, and that is for uh, basically career professionals mm-hmm. as missions. Um, the, the educator, you know, teachers, uh, construction workers, medical professionals. Uh, we're, we now have the ability to send them as missionaries and ideally partnering them up with a career BBFI missionary on the field so that, as, as I tell them, they would have something to do on the weekends. Uh, there would be a Good. blessing to the career uh, missionary family and their ministry on the field as well. So what, what, what I like about it is considering all four of the, plat- the sending platforms, we are literally a one-stop shop for all things missions here at the BBFI missions office. That's great because regardless of the skill set or the education level, whatever you may have, if God has called you, we have a way to help them Absolutely. get there. <clears throat> so I, I, I appreciate, uh, appreciate all that the missions office is doing in helping uh, get not just uh, career missionaries that are going with the purpose of evangelizing people, discipling them, and planting mm-hmm. churches, but those that work alongside them as well. Sure. You know, when, when I was approved as a missionary back in 1983, my concept of the missions office was that, you know, I go out and raise funds from churches. I, I talk about my ministry and, and pray that God would have them to join with us and support us. Send the money through the mission office. The mission office sent it to me at the end of the month. That was my concept of what the missions office did. Yeah. And, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's much more to it than that. Kind of, would you walk us through as the finance director Sure. Uh, the contributions area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm reminded uh, as we walk through uh, some of these things, uh, and especially uh, contributions, we, we get this question asked uh, often. So how how are my funds processed? You know, when I write right. the check uh, and send it in to you, what what happens there? I'm reminded of that old cartoon on a, a Saturday morning. How does a, a bill become a law? Uh, you know, the, the right. process yeah. that, that, that a bill is taken through to become law. Um, this is kind of how uh, your check 
um, gets to the missionary. Uh, you know, so whatever, uh, whatever method um, an, an individual supporter or a church uh, uses, whether it's writing a check and sending it in, uh, whether it's on, giving online, giving a donation through our online platforms. Sure. Um, so it, it first comes to our office, or it could come actually uh, be routed through a lockbox in Kansas City at the Commerce Bank there and then get to us. Uh, but it, once it gets here, well, uh, we have a team in the contributions uh, area. Uh, they will receive the contribution, examine it closely, who, who is it from, who is it to, and if there's any special um, recommendations, if it's for a special project or if it's just regular old support, uh, they, you know, they determine how to process it. Then it goes into our internal account here. Um, and, and, and basically accumulates through the month their, the support for our missionaries do. And at the end of the month, um, we go through a very rigorous process of right. what we call pre-closing, um, and, and that's where my office and uh, some of the, the counting uh, offices in the back, we kind of work together, uh, look at basically everything that has happened throughout the month, all the contributions that have come in, see if there are any... Um, red flags or if anything's missing and we make sure everything is right and good to go and then at the end of the month uh, all the missionaries uh, get uh, all the funds that have come in through them uh, throughout the month they get it deposited into their bank account and then eventually and this is one of the services that we'll talk about eventually it, it arrives to them on the field you know there's there's a lot more to it than just uh, what I considered back in those days early days of my ministry of just Hey, just send the check in. It'll get to me. There's a lot that goes on behind Absolutely. the scenes that I took for granted, and, and it's great that people understand that. Obviously, our, uh, our donor base is through the local Independent Baptist Church, uh, and we encourage people to give through their local church, mm -hmm. through their missions program. All of the biblical accountability is there. The financial accountability is there. But let's say that uh, someone is not a member <clears throat> of a of a church uh, that supports missions or supports missionaries through the Baptist Bible Fellowship, but they wanted to support a BBFI mm -hmm. approved missionary. Uh, walk us through how would they do that by writing a check or giving online, as you mentioned. Yeah, the, uh, very easily uh, online. You know, you can go to uh, bbfi.org onto the website. And uh, at the top, there is a, you know, there's a drop down box for, for the giving. It'll take them to um, a specific page, and they can actually click on the name of the missionary that they would like to send a gift to. And, the, and it's very intuitive, and it'll walk them through it. They can give a gift that way with a, a credit card. So let me get that right. You say the, the, the web address is bbfimissions.com, and it's right there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, uh, or they could just simply write a check made out to the BBFI. Uh-huh with a note either in the memo line or they could just put a note in the envelope this is for so-and-so missionary for their ministry uh, and send it in to us uh, at uh, the uh, p.o box is 191 uh -huh. p.o box 191 in springfield and that's 65801 one always get the p.o box and yeah. the street address mixed up yeah and and every gift is taxed uh Tax deductible. Tax deductible. Yes. They get a receipt yep. from our office, yep. right? Just as soon as we process, the ladies in the contributions process the, the contribution, a tax deductible receipt is sent out to the donor. And we know that that's not why people give uh, to get a tax donation, but it does come in handy. Sure helps. Uh, might, as well, might as well use it, right? Yes. You know, here at the office, uh, one of the duties that I perform is missionary care. Uh, coming alongside the local church that sent the missionary and uh, and we just send them out under the umbrella of the missions office, but uh, sometimes churches don't have the uh, training or the ability or the finances to to adequately care for their missionaries. So part of what I do is come alongside the sending church and caring for their missionaries and offering any help that I can, whether it's encouragement to uh, to families or or individuals, whether it's health wise that they're struggling. Or uh, you know sometimes government issues that we deal with and, and come alongside and, and help them. Uh, you know sometimes there's personal issues. I mean let's let's face it, Satan attacks all of us the same way, uh, and so sometimes they they have personal issues or with their children and 
Um, so <clears throat> I get to come alongside them and help minister to them in the missionary care aspect, uh, providing that biblical caring aspect to help preserve their family for their ministry and, and for the, the calling that God has put upon their life. Mm-hmm. You know, part of what we do at, at the mission office, too, is to uh, we have a department that specifically targets missionary kids. We call them MKs. Yeah. And uh, because, you know, so often our children, and I, I think I'm guilty of this. In fact, I know I was as a missionary. I, I just said to my kid, hey, just fall in line and follow and do what we do, you know, and didn't really nurture them as I should have. Not, I'm not talking about biblically, but along the, uh, the cares of, of why we do what we yeah, do. Yeah. And so our team here in the missions office ministers to the MKs. And I think that that's a comfort to the missionary parents uh, to know that somebody cares for their kids and loving them. And, and um, let's, because let's face it, those are frontline people that God could put his call upon their life and they could go back. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we, we, we do so many things here at the mission office. I'm thinking about uh, our mail room. Uh, yeah. You know, you probably have some more information about that than, sure. than I have prepared or thought about. We, we provide world-class mail service for our missionaries. Yeah. Um, uh, Mike Duff does a great job uh, helping our missionaries out uh, with first-class mail. Uh, we, we, we basically store and send um, in, in intervals uh, all their first-class mail to them. If they're in the States or going to be in the States, they'll notify Mike say, hey, can you hold my mail? And when I'm in town, I'll, I'll pick it up. Uh, so, you know, we, we, we provide services like that. Some, some missionaries find that uh, instead of, of, of buying um, certain products in their country with a, an incredibly inflated price, it's cheaper to buy them on Amazon yeah. and then have it sent here to the mission office, and then we mail it to the, the missionary, and they find that actually cheaper, and we, we provide those services for them as well. That, that's great. I know that Mike does a tremendous job back there in the mailroom. Yes, and, he does. And, you know, also... Uh, I'm thinking as you're talking and, and you're mentioning the packages, that's becoming the bigger a lion's share of what we handle here as opposed to letters and such yes. uh, because many things have moved to email. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Which brings to mind, you know, that we have a, a, an IT department second to none. Uh, Ken Amand does a tremendous job uh, taking care of our IT department, yes. and we provide an email service for every missionary uh, so that they can give an address to any of their supporters or friends. It routes through our servers and gets to them anywhere in the world. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we, so many things. Along with our medical plan that we provide, we mm-hmm. have a, <clears throat> as you well know, and I do, we, we are part of it as well. The, it's a, a first-class medical plan. Agreed. Uh, you know, that uh, the, the deductible, I mean, the, the rates are, are – you know, compared to what people pay out on the, the, the marketplace. outside marketplace, mm-hmm. it's incredible. Sure. Um, and so our medical plan, that it's a mandatory plan because it's self-funded. All of our missionaries are included in it. It covers them worldwide, uh, you know, not just the medical with a $750 deductible and a $1,000 copay, uh, which is, is, is crazy. Right. Every, every pastor I mention it <laughs> yeah. to, they want to join up. Right. Sorry, pastor. And I say, hey. You know what? <laughs> Surrender to be a missionary will help you out. Yep, absolutely. But, uh, Sign on. So, uh, <laughs> but it not only has medical coverage, you know, we have a, a life insurance that's built into mm-hmm. that premium they pay, 25000 life on, on the head of household. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it has medical evac. If a missionary is in a country where they can't get the adequate care that they need to sustain their life and bring them back to health, uh, then our plan will We'll assess that, and if it's necessary medically, we'll, we'll evacuate them. In fact, yeah. this morning at 4 a.m., I got a call from one of our missionaries in another country, and, and they needed our help. Mm-hmm. And uh, so at 4 a.m. this morning, we got uh, located uh, our medical people, and we started the process to, to get them the help that they yeah. needed. So, yeah. you know, that's a peace of mind. That Absolutely. And then, and also you know, in the the unfortunate event where a missionary would pass away on the field, the medical plan um, provides for repatriation of yes. their remains coming yes. back to the states. In fact, we're having a memorial service, a funeral service for 
or two of our missionaries that their bodies were just recently repatriated and uh, tragic events that, that took their lives. And so I'm glad you mentioned that because that brings peace of mind to yes. the existing family members here in the States that want the bodies of their loved ones brought back. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. our medical plan is great. And, you know, and all of that brings me back to the financial thought. Uh, you know, I thought, hey, the mission office, all they do is, is receive my checks every month from the different donors, process it, send it to me, and that's all they do. Mm-hmm. Well, we've already talked about a ton of stuff, but uh, you as the finance director, yeah. uh, you would say, Steve, you're kind of ignorant on that because we do much more. No, I'd never call uh, you ignorant, my friend. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. You're very kind. <laughs> Maybe uh, other things, but not that. <laughs> you, you know, um, basically the things that, that we're outlining that we do, and then um, probably a list of, of another 50-plus uh, services that we would provide within the financial and legal realm is what sets us apart from, you know, it's the distinction between a clearinghouse and a service center, okay? Yeah. And, and we are a true service center uh, in providing those services uh, to our missionaries. Um, and, and literally, I, I have in, in, from my office, I do have a list of 30-plus of, of things that we do for our missionary. Wow. Um, but I'll not bore our listeners with all 30. Let me just highlight a few. Um, and, and these are kind of the main, the main things that would attract maybe a, a prospective missionary to us as a service center, sure. uh, you know, a kind of a value add service that we provide bank letters, uh, of credit. Uh, if they're opening a new, bank account on the field, uh, oftentimes the bank would ask for a letter from their quote unquote employer. Why are they there? What are they doing? We would provide letters, um, for them. Uh, to the bank wire transfers remember that um, oh, getting the money huge. to the field once they get the deposit uh, in their bank account here at the end of the month um, we can wire those funds from bank accounts here uh, to their bank accounts on the field either in u.s dollars or in their local currency that's a huge deal okay. um, letters of verification uh, they, they might need those to obtain work permits or visas to stay in the country and do what they're doing uh, loans uh, we have the capability financially to offer uh, vehicle loans, personal loans, ministry loans, project loans. Uh, another uh, loan type, it's an advance, we call it, is a medical loan. Mm. Many times when a missionary has a procedure on the field, uh, the hospital, the physician physician would require upfront payment. Right. They oftentimes don't have that amount of cash handy, so they might put it on their credit card. What we can do as an office is basically reimburse the missionary for those upfront costs, and as uh, their medical claims come in, well, we reimburse that loan sure. uh, to their account. Wow. Uh, just a, like you said, a peace of mind, knowing that we could do that for them. Notary public services. We have three notaries here in the office uh, wow. that, 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 that can be used for, uh, by our missionaries. We have power of attorney, um, and, and not that um, it is, you know, we do things um, um, in spite of, oftentimes it's a, it's a misnomer what a power of attorney is. It, right. it gives us the ability to transact business on their behalf while they're not here. So and while then, they're on the field, and that's peace of mind for the missionary. Exactly. So um, uh, tax documents. We uh, will send a 1099 to our missionaries and also to their tax preparer at the beginning of each year for the previous year's taxes. Uh, and so I'll just stop there. That's, that's just a kind of a, the tip of the iceberg of some of the financial and legal services that we provide uh, for our missionaries. You and know, that's across the board um, platforms. One of the things that, that we didn't mention, and it came to mind when you're talking about the power of attorney and, and how it brings peace of mind, you know, one of the things that we've done is, is we contract with a security company yeah. here in the United States. And uh, so we have a crisis action team that uh, if in the event of a crisis in one of our missionaries' lives, whether it's terrorist uh, or uh, began with a terrorism issue or whether it's a natural disaster, anything it could be, uh, we're trained to respond and help them. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, that brings great peace of mind. And that doesn't come cheap. The retainer that we have 
for this company and the training that we've gone through and, and the training that every BBFI missionary receives uh, when they when they become a BBFI missionary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but so that leads me uh, all these things that we do. Okay. And, and, and providing the security and all the financial and legal services we provide, missionary care, medical plan. Um, how much do all these things cost? One, our missionary. Two, how much does it cost the mission office to be able to provide these services? You know, you, you, you bring that up because it always comes back to money, doesn't yeah. it? <clears throat> Everybody always says, all right, well, how much is this going to cost me? It would be a bargain if you've told me all of this. It would be a bargain at $300 a month or $400 a month. But the reality is it cost our missionaries absolutely nothing. Our career is, missionaries, Our right? career missionaries, it is totally free uh, for those career missionaries. We do all of this uh, because God has provided. Uh, and the, one of the ways that God provides is, you know, churches often say you can't just do this for free. You've got to have some support. I mean, obviously, you and I get paid. We have 16 staff members here at the missions office. We, we run this building. Uh, we process, what, how many, 30 what million? Above $35 million each Above $35 million every year. You don't do that for nothing. Right. So it does cost, but thankfully, uh, churches support our office just like they do missionaries to do the work that we do. And so I'm often asked when I'm out preaching, as I'm sure you are, uh, you know, how much should I support the office? What is the norm? What is the average? Uh, and, uh, you know, it costs more than what we, what we say, what we publish, but uh, a good ballpark figure is $5 per transaction. And what that means is if a church, I'll just use a low number, but if a church supports 10 missionaries a month and they send $5 per missionary transaction, uh, that would be $50. Right. And, you know, that helps us. It doesn't cover all the cost, but it greatly helps us to, to cover the cost of of not just processing the funds for the missionaries, but all of the other services that we provide. Mm -hmm. And uh, thankfully, our directors in the past and our current director, John Connerup, have done a tremendous job of stewardship with God's yes. money. Uh, you know, we don't frivolous, frivolously spend it. Uh, we seek the Lord's will and, and direction mm -hmm. in, in everything that we do. And so, you know, churches support our office. An average of five dollars per transaction is a good rule of thumb, but we also and have so, a, and so churches or individuals or businesses could support the mission office the same way they would a missionary, correct? Correct, and it's all tax deductible, mm -hmm. uh, even the support for the missions office. So if there's people out there that wanted to leave a legacy in missions, uh, and I think you're getting training and, and yeah. going to be out on the road uh, occasionally presenting that because there are a lot of good godly men and women that want to do something beyond when God takes them home to heaven. Yep. Uh, they want to continue to see people come to know Jesus Christ and they can leave a legacy gift to our office or to support particular missionaries or whatever it mm -hmm. might be. Mm -hmm. And so uh, That's a good point. we have individuals, donors, we have churches that, that support us, we have businesses that support us, but then we have almost all of our missionaries. Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't request it of them, but voluntarily they see the services that we provide and they support our office monthly. You know, it might be $10, $20, $30, uh, you know, $100 a month, but they voluntarily do that, and we appreciate yeah, that we so do. very much. Yes, it, it just really helps us out. But you know, it, it's uh, this. I hope this has helped a lot of people to understand a little bit more about what the missions office does, how mm -hmm. we operate. Uh, that we're not just uh, sitting here just taking in checks and sending them out and living high on the hog, so to speak. Uh, but we're, we're constantly looking for ways to cut money, to cut expenses, to be more efficient, to do God's work around the world. Yeah. But that brings me to the thought, you know, the world population is growing tremendously. Our missionary numbers, not just the Baptist Bible Fellowship, but uh, every organization seems to be in decline. Yes. Uh, so we're, we've started Project 938 that's been advertised on the screens here mm -hmm. around us uh, to pray for more labors as Jesus looked and saw 
the multitudes, and he said to his disciples, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers. And so on Sunday, October the 3rd, mm -hmm. we're asking uh, all of the churches that will to join us in an international day of prayer, not just the United States, but globally, to ask God to send forth more laborers into the harvest. They might be Sunday school teachers. They might be bus workers. They might be janitors in a church or Christian school workers. Hopefully many of them would be missionaries yeah. that God calls them and they say yes mm -hmm. to whatever God wants in their life. Mm -hmm. So that'll be on Sunday, October the 3rd uh, for our Project 938 Sunday. I know you've been pushing it, promoting it, preaching it, teaching yep. it. Yep. You've put out some Bible Excited. studies for it. Uh, so with that said, any any last thoughts before we close this session? No, nope, I think we've covered it. All right. Well, I hope it's been beneficial. Uh, Project 938, our podcast, 938 podcast, join us again. Help us to spread the gospel around the world. God bless you.